Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Math Channel. Um, I'm now going to start answering questions from this January 2024 International A Level in Excel Statistics S1 paper. And this is from um, the Edexcel syllabus. Now, I'm going to be answering these questions um, one by one, one video at a time. I'm going to save each question on a separate video such that I can save the questions in playlists. One playlist will be for the actual paper. One playlist will be from the topic that the paper, that particular question is from. I'm going to go through the questions sometimes in some detail and answer them in like keeping in mind some of the questions that my students have asked me and keeping in mind some of the misconceptions that people have, some of the common mistakes that people make in these questions, right? Because I'm using this as a teaching tool. It's not just um, a case of just reading through the mark scheme. Okay, so let's start with question number one. It says the histogram below shows the distribution of the heights to the nearest centimeter of 408 plants. So straight away we can understand that there's 408 entries in the data. So we have a histogram. Now a histogram is something that looks a bit like a bar chart, um, but it's not a bar chart at all. Because in a bar chart, the height of the bars um, give you the frequency or the amount, the number in each category. Whereas in a histogram, it is the area of the bar which is related to the frequency of entries in that particular group. All right, so that's something I have to keep in mind here. So it says, use the histogram to complete the following table. So we're given a frequency table and we're given a histogram. Okay, so we know from the histogram, the first bar, the second bar and the third bar, the values of the frequency table are given. But the frequency table values we have to write in are for the last two bars. So what we can do is, there's two ways we can tackle this. Okay, I'm going to go through, I'm going to explain this in two different ways. One of the ways of tackling a question like this is to think of the number of squares in the bar, all right, and see the frequency and then work out how many items does each square represent. So in this area here, 32 plants are represented. So how many squares represent you know, um, how many plants are represented by each square? So what we can do is we can simply count the number of squares. So here we have four squares from top to bottom. And across this rectangle you have here, that's five plus three, that's eight squares. And four times eight is 32. So there's 32 squares representing 32 plants. So a very simple uh, proportion there is that one square is representing one plant. So if I can just now go to the ones which I don't know the frequencies for and just count the number of squares, I will know the number of plants that fit into that category. Simple as that, right? Very simple. So for example, here we have, that's 15 to 19, 17, sorry. But in terms of squares, that's four squares. Four squares across, one, two, three, four. And up we have five, 10, 15 plus three, that's 18. So this is going to be four times 18, which gives you, 40 plus 32, 72. So there's 72 squares here. So this means there's 72 plants here. One square represents one plant. And similarly here we have two up and down. And across we have, well, this is going to be 5, 10, 15 plus 1, 16 across. There's 16 across. So we have 16 times 2, which is 32. 32 squares, 32 plants. Simple as that. Okay, that's a very nice, simple way. That's the way I would normally, um, you know, tackle such a question. Um, there are other ways. I'm going to show you one other way of doing this. Okay, and that's using like a traditional, using the frequency density and calculating the frequency density method. So, for example, we can add a new row to this table called frequency density. And the frequency density is basically the frequency divided by the class width. So 32 divided by 4. Now, we've got to be careful about the class widths. Because if there's a gap here, it will affect our problem. But there's no gaps. If this, for example, was 8 and that was 9, then it would be a problem. We would have to then extend okay, the uh, values across. But here, that's from 5 to 9, 9 to 30, no gaps. So basically, we can just divide 32 by this width, which is the class width is 4. 32 divided by 4 is 8. So I know that this is 8. And from there... I don't have to work out what these are, to be honest. I just have to, from there, work out the scale of the frequency density. 
So if the, up to there is eight, that means that's two, four, six, eight. So each of these group of five is basically 10. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and so on. So we, we're worried about these, this one here. Okay, these two, these are the two that are missing. Okay, so I'm gonna cross out this. Um, this is from what we did first, just to, uh, you know, we're, gonna, we're working those out now. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to see what the frequency density of this bar is. It's over here. That's 30, 2, 4, 6. That's 36. Okay, so we know the frequency density for this is 36. And for this one, the frequency density is going to be 2, 4. It's going to be 4. So the frequency density for this one is going to be 4. So remember, we said frequency density is equal to the frequency divided by the interval. Therefore, the frequency is equal to the frequency density times interval. So to find the number that goes in here, it's 36, the frequency density, times 2, which is 72, which is exactly what we have to find. And here we're going to have the frequency density, which is 4 times 70 to 25, that's um, 8. 4 eights are 32, exactly what we had before. All right. So there's two ways of dealing with this question, one using the bars and the number of bars which I find the easier way and the other way is to actually work out the frequency density values and then use this method here okay that part b says use interpolation to estimate the median okay so I'm just going to get rid of some of these things here now um, just to make it a bit clearer now use interpolation to estimate the median so interpolation is a type of proportion Okay, we cannot find the actual median because we don't know the values. Everything is grouped. Okay, so when we estimate the median, first thing we have to know is we have to basically find the middle value when they're in order of size. So n is equal to the total number of entries, which we can see is 408 from the beginning of the question. And if we wanted to check that we, we did the correct calculations for these two, we could have add these together and we could have seen do that add up to 408. So we could even do a quick check now if you want to. So we have 32 plus 152 plus 120 plus 72 plus 32. That gives us 408. Okay, so we know there's 408. So the median, which is called Q2, its position, the position of the median is given by N over 2. Okay, which is 408 divided by 2, which is 204. So when we're dealing with this type of grouped data, we don't have to bother about, okay, 204 is a whole number, so we have to take the 204th and the 205th entry because there's an even number of entries, there'll be two numbers in the middle. We don't bother with anything like that. Whatever it comes out as, whether it's a decimal or a fraction or a whole number, we just take that value because we don't know any of the details of this data, so we're just estimating anyway, okay? So what we do then is we, we draw our... Uh, I'd like to draw a little diagram to show our class interval. So first thing we got to work out which one of these intervals is the 204th term in. Because the 204th term is the place where the median term is. So we're going to find what is the median term in that place. So we have 32 entries in the first term. Okay, in the first group, sorry. We have 152 entries in the second group. So that makes 152 plus 32, which is 184 entries. And then we add 120 to that. That, that will, By the time we go to the end of this group, we're going to be on the 304th entry. Okay, that's going to be 304th entry. So we for sure know that the 204th um, term must be somewhere in this group. That's the group that contains the median. So that's um, the first thing we have to do, find the group. The group that contains the median is a group from 13 to 15. From 13 to 15. Okay, so at the beginning of the group, as we mentioned, we're on the 184th term. By the end of the group, we're on the 304th term. Inside that group, the, inside that group altogether, we have 120 terms. Okay, and we're looking for the term, which we're going to call Q2, which is in the 204th position. So if we can use some sort of a proportion here. I can say, okay, we are this far into the group, out of 120, okay? So that's a fraction where we're into the group. So we, the group starts at 13 plus, and we're 
20 out of 120. That's a proportion we are into this group. Now this group, in terms of the values that we're looking for, is two units wide from 13 to 15. Okay, so that's going to give us our value of Q2. Okay, 13 plus 20 over 120 times 2. So what does that give us? 13 plus uh, 20 over 120 multiplied by 2. And that gives us 40 over 3. 40 over 3. So we can round that to 3SF for our final answer. That gives us 13.3. 13.3. And that is in centimeters. That is the median value of the um, heights of the plants in that group. Okay, so there's the answer to part A and B. Now for part C, it says the mean height of these plants is 13.2 centimeters, correct to one decimal place. Describe the skew of these data. Give a reason for your answer. So we can see the mean, which would give the symbol mu, is 13.2 centimeters, correct to one decimal place. And the median value is 13.3 centimeters. This is correct also to one decimal place or three SF. Now, what we can see is, what we could say here is that they're basically almost the same. We can say that the mean is almost the same as the median. Therefore, we can say little, let me write a bit neater than that. Therefore, we can say little or no skew. So little or no skew. So this is um, probably the better answer. Okay, you could and you would get the marks if you do say oh, Q2 is greater than mu. Okay, and therefore we're going to have what type of skew? Well, if you're not sure, I always remember like this. If you have positive skew, okay, remember that you always have the, you have the mode. The mode is always the highest bar. And the median is always the middle bar. And the mean is always the smallest bar when you have skewed data. So positive skew will be, you'll have the median... And then you'll have the mean. So you'll have the mode, then have the median, and then you have the mean. Okay, that's positive skew. So that means the mean is greater than the median. It's higher, it's a higher value than the median. Okay, when you have negative skew, you have the mode, and then you have the median, and then you have the mean. So you can see that the mean is less than the median when you have this kind of skew, which is called negative skew. Okay, so we can say Q2 is greater than mean. Q2 is greater than mean. Therefore, we're going to have negative, negative skew. If you put, if you put, for example, slight, slightly negative skew, that would be better. But I think the better, better answer is this: that they, they're almost the same. That's a justification, and therefore little or no skew. Or if you want to, you would get the marks as the mark scheme does state. If you look in the notes. If somebody wrote this and they did justify it by saying that, you know, there's slight negative skew. Why? Because the median is greater than the mean. That would also be acceptable. OK, so there's the answer for part C of this question. And part D is left. It says two of the, these plants are chosen at random. Estimate the probability that both of their heights are between 8 and 14 centimeters. All right. So let's look at our. So we have the total sample space which was 408. So the total number is 408. So that would be our sample space. That would be our denominator for the, the first pick at least. And then we're going to um, have to choose, the ones that we want to choose have to be between, the, we want to find the probability that they are between 8 centimeters and 14 centimeters. So let's try and f figure out an estimate of how many plants we can um, you know, estimate are between those values. So here we have 5, and that's 9. I think each 2 is that's 6. 7, 8. So each of these two squares is one unit. So that's going to be where 8 starts. Okay, that's 8. Up to 14, that's 15. 14 is going to be up to here. So 14 will go up to here. All right. So what we've got to do now is we've got to f um, estimate how many plants lie in this area Okay, up to 14. Right? 
So we can do that by looking at the values in the frequency table. Um, the obvious one is going to be from 9 to 13. That's, there's 152 in this bar. We know that already. But in this bar, we can do it by using, um, again, we, proportion. We can say, okay, there's uh, each one of these squares represents one plant. There's 2 times 4 squares. That's 8 plants. So there's 8 together. Or we could say the whole of this was 32. And we've got one quarter of it. If we think about this, this is going to be one quarter. So it's a quarter of 32, which is eight. We can think of it like that as well. And a similar kind of uh, method we can use for this. Be between 13 and 15, there are 120 items. We've got half of that. So that's going to be 60. So we can see that between 13, between 8 to uh, 14, we have total number of 8 plus 152 that's going to be 160 plus 60 220 so we can say for the first pick the first pick we have 220 to choose uh, out of a total of 408 okay out of a total of 408 okay and for the second pick okay so now we're going to pick again but we already picked one of those in this category so that's 219 and we've already picked one of the whole groups, so that's 407. If I multiply those two together, I'm going to get my answer. Okay, so we take 220 over 408. We multiply that with 219 over 407. And that gives us 365 over 1,258. 365 over 1,258. Okay, and that concludes this question, which is question number one, okay, from the January 2024 paper, S1, International A-Level at Excel. Other questions from this paper can be found in the playlist, which the link will appear in this region at the end of this video. You also have a link appearing over here for the playlist, which deals with histograms. And another playlist here which deals with averages from frequency tables. And you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.